Welcome to the basement, everybody. I'm your host, 90s Basement Kid, and we are back with an all new review. Now, this is one, this is a movie I've been very excited for. It's probably my most anticipated movie of the year, besides maybe the new Star Wars, and that would be the new Tarantino flick, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Now, I have to say, you know, I'm a little biased when it comes to a movie like this because Quentin Tarantino is my favorite director. I feel like his approach to dialogue specifically is unrivaled and unmatched. Maybe a bit much, but I really feel that way. I just, you know, the way his characters speak to each other just drives a movie in a way that no other type of movie can do. You know, I can't think of any other movie where the dialogue top to bottom matches anything like a Pulp Fiction or even Inglorious Bastards or Reservoir Dogs. His ability to have creative cinematography is just unmatched. You know, he's done everything from handheld style filmmaking practically to big, robust Hollywood style. And quite frankly, this is a movie would go in line with sort of that, you know. This is very much a throwback style film while feeling incredibly modern as well. It feels very much like the most modern type of Tarantino movie I've seen and the way that it was cultivated and crafted. It's very much a throwback, you know, to 1969 and feels that way, especially with the use of 35 millimeter film and 70 millimeter in some instances, but it just, watching it feels very much like something that could have came out modern times and would have, you wouldn't even bat an eye at it. The cast is outstanding. Leonardo DiCaprio shows why he's been a 20 plus year leading man and why it was such a crime for him to get an Oscar so late in his career. He's fantastic in this. Brad Pitt is amazing. He may be the best part of the movie acting wise. He really is the glue that holds the film together as far as the characters. Even Margot Robbie as Sharon Tate, I think did a fantastic job. A lot of people are debating about how useful she is to the movie, but I would argue she is super necessary because she adds historical context to the story and her simple existence lets you know kind of the time frame in which this movie is supposed to be taking place. Nudge, nudge, wink, wink. And I say that because as we know, Tarantino likes to play a history a little bit. He's done it in some of his previous movies, I would actually say the last three movies he's done, quite frankly, fourth one including this one, that it's kind of been his thing most recently. But this is a fantastic movie. I would say it's mid-range Tarantino. You know, it's not his best work. I like it better than Hateful Eight, but it's really hard to judge it because, you know, when you make so many movies as a guy like Tarantino, especially good ones, you know, the rank them almost feels disrespectful because they're all really good in their own rights. But if I had to rank it, I would say it's better than, you know, Hateful Eight and Death Proof, right around, you know, Jackie Brown range, just below Reservoir Dogs and Kill Bill. Oh, I saw Arclight Hollywood. I had to see the 35 millimeter, you know, you have to, you know, it's very rare that movies are actually filmed on film these days. So anytime you have, I think, anytime you have a chance to take advantage of that, you should. I admit it's hard, this is very much, you know, we're the Angel City guys, so it's very much an Angel City thing, or just a big city thing rather to have the ability to see a film 35 millimeter. But if you do have that opportunity, I highly recommend it. I'm hoping to see the film in 70 millimeter at some point as well. I don't know if it'll happen, but you know, fingers crossed, I really wanna give it a shot because you know, film is different than watching a movie digital. You know, when you see a movie in film, the way it's projected, there are minor strobes of basically black that your eyes, you can't really see it, but your brain can perceive it. And it helps the movie stay in your head longer, you know, because your eyes need breaks to digest information. That's just how our brains work. With digital movies, you really don't get that. I mean, by really don't get that, you don't get it at all. It's just a constant stream of just visual imagery, which they say can affect the way your brain handles it, which I think there could be an argument made for how that affects films, but that's really a conversation for another time. The ending of this movie is outstanding. Now, I'm not gonna give it away because I think everybody should see this movie in the end. The last 20 minutes of this movie are by far the best part. You know, it's maybe the most satisfying ending that I've seen this year of any film, to be quite frank. It's just, I, I can't even begin to describe it. You just have to see it. It's great. Um, the rest of the plot is great as well. It drags a little in the middle, I have to say. Is, the movie is long, I'm not going to lie to you. But to me, you know, there's just so much scenery to chew on and the acting is so great that it didn't really bother me. Anytime the movie felt like it was starting to drag or stall, I felt like it picked itself back up at just the right moment and kind of continued. So I think, obviously, Tarantino was a little rare of how people might feel with that. He's still, a lot of people probably gonna think this is a slow and boring movie, unfortunately, but I am not one of them. I thought it was fantastic. Well, 
This has been another review of 90s Basement Kid. Hit the like and subscribe buttons at the bottom, and we'll be back really soon with more reviews. Quite a few of which I think you really enjoyed. Peace.